yeah, what am I doing with an art monitor? Here's the deal. I'm not a panel guy. I'm an audio guy. I don't measure the colors in things. I just used to watch all of Erica Griffin's videos on phone displays to try and figure out if my opinions vibed with her actual real world testing. But the folks at Innocent sent over their 27 inch 4K art monitor for me to take on a test drive and share my thoughts. And I'm glad they did because it's a pretty sweet display. It's real pretty. Jumping right in. This is a thin bezel 27 inch monitor UHD resolution using an IPS panel and boasting 100% sRGB color coverage. The box was a bit bigger than I was expecting, but I'm glad it was packed as well as it was, and it includes a DisplayPort cable, a nice USB-C cable, a large power brick, and a USB hub cable. On the monitor, we've got two HDMI 2.0 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4, a USB Type-C display connection with 65 watt power pass-through, and a pair of USB 3 pass-through hub ports. With all those connections, we get support for picture-in-picture -picture and picture by picture, leave me a comment down below. Are you using PBP on your 16 by nine monitors? It just kind of feels a little off to me. I personally think that makes more sense for ultra wides, but I'm curious if anyone out there is using it. The stand is brilliantly constructed. Outside is just plain plastic, but the base arm and VESA head are all metal. We can swivel, twist and angle up. A minor gripe, I wish we had just a little more room to push forward or angle down. Five buttons on the bottom edge of the panel. These quickly toggle inputs to navigate you around the on-screen controls. They all seemed pretty straightforward to me in terms of on-screen display options, though increasingly, I hope more monitor manufacturers will start adding support for software control through your PC. That's not a huge gripe here, and it's, a, it's more of a feature found on gaming hardware, but it would be nice to see those options more accessible through mouse control. All your favorite hits here, panel settings for sRGB or Adobe Color, manual toggle for a couple different HDR modes, and all packed into a simple overall design. There's just a little logo right here on the bottom bezel. I like the anti-glare coating on the screen, especially for how funky my lighting is in this office, you know, being able to work around top down and some angled lights. We're sticking with the out of the box factory calibration, but immediately there's a difference in looking at photo and video projects compared to my older Samsung TN panel monitor. My old Samsung is respectable as a UHD display, but maxed out, the Innocent is easily able to put out a brighter image. I have to dial this back because any white web page is just gonna kind of sear my eyeballs. That older Samsung was rated somewhere around 370 nits. The Innocent is advertised at 400. Anecdotally, I'd say the difference is a little wider real world. Using an old Lux meter that I had lying around, I saw center brightness around 380 on my Samsung and reaching around 450 on the Innocent. This really comes in handy with movies, especially dark horror films, we have a bit more range to my eye where they look muddier and kind of dull on my Samsung. And the HDR modes are subtle, but they're kind of fun to mess around with, especially on some of my more recent Blu-ray rips. I'm just using my camera to test. The panel seems nicely uniform in brightness with only a bit of bleed down by my bottom bezel. This is me completely lights out, monitor set to its maximum brightness and kind of cranking the ISO on my camera. I feel that looks pretty good. It's not something that I would be bothered by, but we are talking about a monitor positioned as an art display. And the threshold for photo and video professionals is likely finer than my needs. The Innocent is AMD FreeSync compatible with a maximum refresh of 60 Hertz. It is not a gaming monitor. I also have an older 144 Hertz ASUS that I use for gaming. That's a very clear difference in terms of performance. I think in general, a 60 Hertz IPS display is gonna be fine for playing a game, especially on computers or consoles that aren't really putting out over 60 FPS. But the twitchier your gameplay gets, the more you'll wanna move to a proper higher refresh rate display. Totally not a selling point, but it is pretty cute how you can completely connect and drive a mini console using the HDMI and USB ports. I know you can do that on TVs and other monitors, but it was fun here too. I'm gonna get my SNES on in 4K. The only other criticism to share, the only other thing to point out here, the speakers are a bit reedy. They're 
okay considering the depth that we usually reserve for audio components in a monitor, but you're not really gonna wanna depend on them if you can help it. Ditto the headphone jack. Pass through using HDMI or USB, it's not dissimilar from what I've listened to on other portable monitors. A notable hiss is present, especially when audio playback is paused. It's usable if you have nothing else, but just about anything else is gonna be a little nicer. Overall, I'm digging this display. It is a nicer image than my old TN panel. It's bright, colorful, crisp detail from that high resolution. Even if it might be a little overkill for my kind of workflow, you know, the kind of videos I produce on my channel, I think I see enough here where professionals might appreciate what this display can do. I'll probably get even more out of this hardware with proper calibration, and better studio lighting, which brings us to the price. And I think we're in about the right ballpark against other IPS displays that we would normally shop as art or photo video editing displays, punching just above a similarly specced out Dell with speakers as one brief example. The Innocent is rated at a higher peak brightness, slightly lower contrast, comparable color coverage, DisplayPort 1.4 instead of 1.2 on the Dell, and includes the USB-C and USB-A pass-through ports. About 50 bucks more expensive, but that's not too shabby. The longer I've spent with it, and you know, the longer I've used it, I might need to budget for a monitor upgrade, even for my meager video editing needs. I will, of course, leave some links down below this video for more information on the Innocent, specifically this art monitor, but they also make a couple of really interesting portable displays, some high quality OLED portable screens. Company you might wanna check out if you're trying to improve on your display setup. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting the channel has been greatly appreciated. Clicking on affiliate links down below, maybe you're shopping a little merch. That kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. Full list, all my affiliates and partnerships, somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider, just maybe, joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.